Hi everybody. Welcome to Ordinary Differential Equations, the mathematical framework and tools for understanding, modeling, and predicting anything that moves. Hi. Welcome back to Ordinary Differential Equations. Today we start Chapter 3, a study of the behavior near specific solutions or trajectories and invariant sets. Here we're going to introduce the notion of stability. So we start with a general ODE, autonomous, non-autonomous. We write it down as non-autonomous and let x bar of t, t naught, x naught denote a specific solution of this ODE. And what we're interested in are the behavior of nearby solutions. Now we've got to make that precise, but first of all, we need to put ourselves in a framework where we can analytically discuss the notion of nearby solutions in the context of the dynamics generated by this vector field. And to do that, we're going to introduce a time-dependent coordinate system. That's the way I like to look at it. So our original coordinates were x. Now we're going to let x equal y, that's the new variable, plus the solution for which we're interested in the behavior of nearby trajectories. So if y is small, then x is near x bar. All right, now what we're going to do is rewrite the original ODE in terms of this new y coordinate. And we know the interpretation of y from its definition in 3.2. So we substitute it into the equation, differentiate it. x dot is y dot plus x bar dot. And x dot is f of x and t, but x is y plus x bar, and we substitute it in. Now, we want to isolate y dot. And we do it in this way. We have f of y dot equals f of y plus x bar, comma t minus x bar dot. But x bar, is a solution of the equation. So x bar dot is f of x bar t. And this we define as a new function. This is just for convenience. g of y and t, x bar is known. So it's g of y and t. Now we see that g of 0 comma t is 0. Just substitute it in. So y equals 0 which puts us on the solution that we're interested in, x bar of t, is an equilibrium point of this new equation. All right, so the first question we want to ask about the behavior near x bar is whether or not x bar of t is stable. Now, stability is a big topic in ODEs and dynamical systems. And it's kind of thrown away, around uh, a bit haphazardly. So whenever you hear the word stability, you need to say, to understand or ask, stability of what? So right now we're looking at stability of this specific solution, x bar of t, t naught, x naught. Okay, so first we need definitions of stability. And there are, this is a big subject, there are many definitions, but... The most common ones that we're going to use in this course are here. The first definition, 13, is that of Lyapunov stability. Now, sometimes people leave off the name Lyapunov and just say stability for the same concept. Um, that's, well, that's unfortunate. Lyapunov was a major, major contributor to this entire theory. In fact, he essentially developed it. And the, fir the first developer of the theory of stability of ordinary differential equations. Now, these I give you some official definitions with epsilons and deltas. Those are pretty easy to formulate when you're looking at the solution of y equals zero. If y could depend upon t naught and x naught, it'd be a little bit more cumbersome, and that's a another good reason for transforming to this moving coordinate system. But it will there will be many other reasons for that. So. Roughly speaking, 
Lyapunov stability means that if you start close to the solution of interest, x bar, you stay close forever after. Okay, and if, it's, if the solution is not Lyapunov stable, then we say it's unstable. Easy enough. Now we have a, a bit more of a refined definition, asymptotic stability. It's not just that if we start close, we hang around that solution forever. If we start close, we hang around forever. So it's Lyapunov stable, but we also get closer and closer and closer as time goes to infinity. Okay. So a few bullet points for you to ponder down here. Stability is an infinite time concept. Of course, mathematicians like to generalize everything and to find and to, and to change the conditions and see what would happen if you uh, modified these in some way. So I'll leave you to ponder that. Um, the definitions of stability do not tell us how to prove that they are satisfied in particular examples. We're going to learn about that later when we learn about linearization and Lyapunov's second method. Okay, now Lyapunov, the, the notions of stability are about uh, smallness, closeness, and I didn't, wasn't really precise about that notions, but it's important to just to write them down so we're all on the same page from this point on. So our phase space is going to be Rn. A point in phase space is the typical n-tuple of real numbers, x1, comma, dot, 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 comma, xn. The size of the vector in Rn is just the square root of the sum of the squares of each component, the norm of the vector, the Euclidean norm. And the distance between two points in Rn, x and y, we can write this in several ways, is just the square root of the sum of the squares of the distances, or the differences, between each component. Okay, hopefully these were familiar to you, but we're going to use them over and over again throughout the course. Okay, so that's good for now. Next time I will talk about stability of an invariant set. Of course, a trajectory is an example of an invariant set, but we want to look at more general invariant sets as we introduced in the last lecture. Okay, so bye for now.